welcome back. I'm Allison. This is Wonder Crochet. It's that time of year again where we get to do our crochet year in review. So this is everything that I crocheted in 2023. As I was compiling this list, I hope I didn't miss anything, but if you notice that I did, please call me out in the comments. So this will only include every project that I have finished from January 1st until now. As you know, I have a problem with works in progress, so we're just doing completed projects for this one. And as I was going through this list, I was counting how many crochet patterns that I designed in 2023, and as of right now, it's 40, which is wild. And I was able to go full-time in my crochet business this year, so I think that's why there's just so many more patterns than there were last year, because that truly is one of my favorite things to do is to design new crochet patterns. So this will be especially fun to look through all those and everything else that I crocheted this year. But before we jump into my long list of crochet projects, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. As you know, I'm a huge fan of Skillshare. It's an online learning platform with thousands of different classes. It's a great place to learn something new and get inspired and then actually utilize the things that you've learned. It offers a wonderful community of creatives and teachers who share the same goals as you. There's so many different topics to choose from like crochet, knitting, digital art, photography, and so much more. You can even learn how to level up your creative business with their social media classes. I joined Skillshare back in 2021 as a teacher, actually, with my Learn How to Crochet Amigurumi for Beginners course, and I knew I wanted to join Skillshare because of that great community of people who are excited to learn. And if you don't yet know how to crochet, you can check out my Learn How to Crochet Amigurumi course. It teaches you from the very beginning how to crochet well with over 40 videos teaching you how to crochet your own plushies, how to read crochet patterns, and more. So if you want to unlock your creativity and learn something new, the first 500 people to use my link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare membership. Once again, thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and thank you in advance to all of you for checking them out and of course supporting my channel through sponsors like these. So let's hop into everything I crocheted in 2023. Okay, so let's start with January. And actually January was one of my busiest months in terms of crocheting things. I think I'm always motivated in January to do more and succeed. You know, you set all of your goals at the beginning of the year. I always come out strong out the gate in January, but I will preface this video by saying that I don't normally do crochet markets or sell a lot of plushies. The bulk of what I do is designing crochet patterns. So I'm not like other crocheters where they'll crochet a ton of plushies to sell, which is very, very impressive. I'm more so crochet one or two of each of my designs and then some random patterns here and there that I just see and I really like and I want to make. The first thing that I crocheted in 2023 was Doris the Duck. And honestly, this really started my love of crocheting animals. I had made Connie the cow, if you can see her right there, in December, and that was one of my mascots for Wonder Crochet. All the animals sitting here are mascots for my brand. Basically, I sell stickers and hoodies and stuff with these cute animals on them, and Doris the Duck was one of them. So this is her sticker design. And then I designed her based off of this. And I really love how it turned out. The silly little skein of yarn on her head. It was just a really fun one to design. So the stickers and the hoodies are in my Etsy shop. And I actually just added crew neck sweatshirts from your suggestions for everyone who loves a crew neck. So you can get fun merch with Doris the Duck on it. The next thing that I crocheted in 2023, and I actually don't have the physical plush, and that is this Hello Kitty plush. I made this in anticipation for Valentine's Day and didn't know how excited you all would be for it. This is a free pattern on my blog and I really got into Sanrio characters this year. They're just so cute and I really like designing plushies for them. But this one specifically, I think was my most popular or maybe second most popular free pattern ever. So that was really exciting for me. And I've seen people make this for just about every holiday. So they'll change out what she's holding. I've made one with a strawberry before and different colored hearts. And I've seen a lot of Christmas ones lately. So I just love that you all love this plush so much. We'll get into what other Sanrio characters I made this year. And then I'd love to know suggestions of other ones that you want to see, because I'd love to do a couple more free patterns of these guys. The next thing I crocheted in January is this jumbo mushroom plush. I really got into crocheting with jumbo yarn this year and making big things. You'll see throughout the video, I made a lot of things in jumbo yarn, but I wanted just a cute mushroom for my space. I'm a big mushroom girly. If you didn't know, 
Wonder Crochet is actually named after Alice in Wonderland because my name is Allison, so I thought it would be cute to do Alice in Wonder Crochet. <laughs> and then I took off Allison and Wonder Crochet just stuck. So a lot of what I make is kind of based off of the Alice in Wonderland aesthetic, like the mushrooms and the flowers and different animals because I just love the whimsical feel of it. So I definitely wanted to make this. I do want to make several more in different colors, uh, especially for the new couch that I got in the craft room, because I'd like the, that couch to just be full of mushroom and flower pillows. But this pattern is in my shop. It's the regular mushroom plush, but for this one, I used jumbo yarn instead of super bulky yarn. The next thing I crocheted was a new pattern design, and it's this ice cream cookie sandwich. It has these two cookies and the ice cream in the middle, and it's very squishy and cute. I really love making food patterns, but especially dessert patterns because I just love sweets. Ice cream cookie sandwiches are actually my favorite dessert, so this one was fun for me to make, but this pattern is in my shop as well. The next thing that I crocheted in January, and this was a new pattern design, it's this daisy purse. I actually made a sunflower purse in 2022, so I definitely wanted to make a daisy one as well. And it does have a working zipper and a pretty big pouch. I haven't lined this one yet, but I did line my sunflower one and I especially like to carry it around in the summer. But as you know, I love making purses and backpacks. I've kind of moved more away from that recently to focus more on plushies, but I would love to get back into it because what's more fun than crocheting something that you can actually use. And I especially love wearing these in public because I get a lot of really nice comments on them. And then continuing with the Valentine's theme, the last thing that I crocheted in January was this Winnie the Pooh Valentine's plush. I really just give a plush a heart to hold and it's suddenly a Valentine's plush, which I love. It's really cute. And I have a free easy plush heart tutorial on my YouTube channel if you want to crochet a heart for your plushies to hold to make them Valentine's plushes. But this Winnie the Pooh pattern is free on my blog. It's actually one of my very favorite things to make. It's quite easy and it only takes me about an hour to make one of these. I've given many Winnie the Pooh plushes as gifts and everyone's always really excited to get them. You know I'm a big Disney girl. <laughs> and I actually grew up with a Winnie the Pooh themed bedroom when I was young. So making something like this now when I'm older brings back a lot of nostalgia and fun. Now we're moving on to February, which is actually my birth month. And the first thing that I crocheted in February was another Sanrio character and it is my Melody. I gave her a heart to hold too because February Valentine's Day. It's actually one of my favorite holidays and, and I think plushies just look so cute when they're holding something. But my Melody is actually my favorite Sanrio character. She's so cute so I definitely had to design a free pattern for her. I especially love her colors and I've seen a lot of people do different colored bows as well so you can definitely mix it up if you make this. My next make was another animal and it is this Mallard Duck. And this is based off of Doris the Duck, but I asked you all to vote on Instagram if you wanted this to just be a completely separate pattern, and you did. So I made this Mallard Duck pattern, and it is in my shop, and this is actually one of the favorite things that I've ever made. I love the different color changes and kind of just the simplicity of his face, but just be warned, if you do make this with larger yarn like Burnett Blanket, it will be a very large plush. I started making my plushes smaller and smaller as I've designed them because I have found that people like them smaller. It's a little bit less of a project to take on, but I did design this almost a year ago, so he is a little bit bigger. But it works really great if you use worsted weight yarn. In February, I actually hit 100,000 followers on Instagram, which was such a huge accomplishment for me. I'm still shocked that so many people are interested in seeing my crochet mix. So I crocheted this giant cupcake and it did have a strawberry on top, but I stole it for another project and I haven't made another one yet, but I will, don't worry. So I made this giant cupcake to celebrate. I thought it would be a fun picture to take for 100,000. And I just can't sell this one because looking at it just makes me happy. And it's almost like a little personal trophy for me. <laughs> my cupcake pattern is in my shop and I just used jumbo yarn instead of super bulky. The next thing that I crocheted was this Mr. Chimera plush. And if you've ever watched the anime Spy Family, that's where it's from. So I did make this a free pattern on my blog, but I actually made this for an, for an art trade with a friend and she made me this incredible felt Anya hoop. This is one of my favorite things in the craft room and this is by Crafty Crossing, so definitely check her out. She's so talented. But we did a cute little spy family trade. I made her a plushie and she made me this hoop. And doing art trades is actually one of my favorite things about the creative community, so I'm definitely going to do more in 2024. But if you're also a big spy family fan like I am and want to make your own Mr. Chimera plush, 
the free patterns on my blog. Continuing with the dessert food theme that we have going on here is this pancake stack pattern. It's three cute pancakes with some syrup and butter. They're nice and squishy. I wanted to do three different faces because I wanted to give it more personality. So I did the happy face, the grumpy face, and then just the normal smiling face. But like I said, I really love designing food and sweets this year because who doesn't love a cute stack of pancakes and to be very honest with you all this is actually one of my lowest selling patterns when you design patterns you have no idea if they're going to be popular or not and for this one I don't know, I just thought it would be more popular. And that's okay, I love it. And I am still really glad that I designed it. Our last design for February is another food item. And it's this blueberry muffin. I did little circles here for the blueberries and then did three blueberries on top. And blueberry muffins are just one of my favorite things to eat. That's literally the only reason why I designed this. As you know, I can't eat gluten, but I make my own gluten-free blueberry muffins just about every week because I just love eating them. <laughs> and this pattern is actually a Ribbler exclusive. And Ribbler is an online platform and an app that's just for fiber crafts where you can sell patterns and plushies and find a lot of cool ones on there. So if you want to make this, then definitely check out Ribbler. And now we're on to March. March was the month of dragons. I designed this dragon pattern and I actually have none to show you. I made, I think, seven different dragons and they all sold. And I think it's because one of the videos that I posted of me making a dragon got a lot of traction. So people were excited about it and just were messaging me interested in buying them, which I love. Uh, it's always fun when people are excited to adopt my plushies. But I loosely designed this after Figment from Disney World, if you're a Disney fan. And that's why I did the purple and orange colors. But I realized that there are so many color combinations that you can do with these dragons. So I did all of these different ones as well. And for a while I was just crocheting dragons based on your color suggestions. And I honestly should make more because this is one of my favorite things to make. There is quite a bit of sewing. Uh, so this was before no so became really popular but i just love how these turned out so i did the figment design one i did kind of like a pink lemonade one a sky dragon and then the classic green one of course so if there's any dragon color combos that you want to see i definitely want to make another one soon our next make is actually the last animal backpack that i ever made and it's this duck backpack it's filled with stuffing right now just so that it holds its shape but its mouth <laughs> opens and that's where you can put your stuff in and out of it. This one was a challenge to design just to get the beak right and make sure that it opened and there was enough space but it was a fun one to design definitely. I actually made this one after I made my frog backpack right there. I made that in 2022 but I actually reposted a video of it on TikTok and it went viral in March so I designed this duck backpack to kind of go off of the success of that video. But 2022 was kind of my year of the animal backpacks. And honestly, I stopped designing them because I found that, that they were just a little bit too big of projects. People were looking for smaller projects and something like different animals where it'd be easy for them to sell at markets. I was basically just kind of listening to what other crocheters wanted. Although we love the cute animal backpacks, they definitely take a good amount of time to make. Uh, with the size and the straps and sewing the zipper in. So maybe if I get inspired in the future for a different animal backpack that I have to make, I definitely will. Otherwise, this is the last one that I designed. The next thing I made was this Tigger plush. This is a free pattern on my blog as well. I have Tigger, Eeyore, Piglet, and Pooh. And there's a big gap between when I designed Piglet, Pooh, and Eeyore and then when I designed Tigger, just because it's a little bit more involved with how the face looks and I wanted to make it look really good, but you all really wanted it, so I had to design Tigger. I've seen a lot of people make these patterns, especially for baby showers. Be sure not to use safety eyes if you're giving it to a baby. And Tigger was actually the last Disney plush that I designed. I really just have been enjoying designing my own characters. The next plush I crocheted, I was really getting into spring designs, which is my absolute favorite thing to do, using pastels and flowers and I made this spring cow and this is my Connie the cow pattern but I just used different colors for the spots and had to hold this cute little flower. So this was the closest thing to a strawberry cow that I made and you'll see later I think in May I did another animal in a spring design and I think you'll like it so wait till we see that. The last plush that I crocheted in March was another Sanrio character. Like I said I was really on a Sanrio kick this year 
and it's Kurobi. Probably my second favorite character behind my Melody. He's just the cutest little happy frog. And this is a free pattern on my blog as well. All my Sanrio plushes are free patterns on my blog. And I like this one because he's little and he works up quickly. I actually crocheted this one on our way to the beach and so it brings back good memories for me. And it kind of looks like he's wearing a little beach outfit with the red and white stripes. And it really just brings back good memories. I kind of want to make another one or maybe give him like a Christmas hat. Oh wait. <laughs> Wait, this is so cute. I think I'm going to post this on Instagram today. I just stole this hat from, from another plush that I just did. And I actually just posted this hat mod on my Instagram. I have a tab with all of my mods on there. I love him even more now. Wait, real quick. It works on so many plushies. Let me know which one you like best. I'm getting distracted now, so let's move into April. And the first thing that I crocheted in April was this kitten. This is my very favorite pattern design. I think of all time. It just makes me happy. I really love how it turned out. And there's so many different colors that you can make from this. So if you want to make it look like your own cat, you can definitely do that. Here's a picture of some different colored ones that I did. I made a gray one, a white one, a calico cat. The calico was probably my favorite color combo. But this was another one of my mascots. So this is Clover the cat. I'll show you her sticker. So this was her sticker design. Just laying down holding the little blue ball of yarn. And then the pattern also comes with other things for the cat to hold. So if you don't want it to have a ball of yarn, I also did a mouse toy and a little toy sushi. So there's some options there. But most of April was spent crocheting cats because I did make so many in so many different colors. The next thing I crocheted is this sloth holding a heart, of course. I also made a lavender one and he's just cute and chunky. <laughs> oh, let's see if the hat fits him. His head's a little big, so it sits on top of it, but it's still really cute. I promise I won't do this for every plushie that we look at. Just the ones that are kind of bald and need something on their head. But that's the next thing I made in April was this little sloth plush and this pattern is in my shop too. The last thing that I crocheted in April is another dessert plush and it's this pineapple upside down cake. And this was kind of made to look a little bit like my s'mores plush, but this one really was fun to design, especially the pineapple on top because it is a ring so it does have a hole in the center and then I sewed the cherry in the middle here. But I named this one Penny. Penny the pineapple upside down cake plush. It's a mouthful. And now we're already on to May. So the first thing that I designed in May was the last Sanrio pattern that I designed in its cinema roll. This one was pretty easy since it's all white. There's no color changes. Just a simple cute plush with big ears. I know that Hello Kitty is probably the most popular, but if you're a Sanrio fan, let me know what your favorite character is. I'd love to crochet more. I definitely want to make Botsmaru. That's my husband's favorite character, the grumpy penguin. <laughs> and since May was the last time I designed one, I'm definitely due for another one. So I'd love to know, so I'd love to know what you want. The next thing that I crocheted in May, and we were just in full spring mode. The floral vibes were here. And and it was probably my favorite month of crocheting. I made this cute little spring duck. So this is my mallard duck pattern, but I obviously used white yarn and didn't do the different color changes. And then I used yellow for the beak and for the feet. And then I made this flower crown. And if you think I like putting Santa hats on all my plushies, I want to put flower crowns on them. I just wish it didn't take so long. So I have a tutorial for these flowers on my YouTube channel. All I did was crochet a green chain and I tied all of the flowers to the green chain and then did a slip stitch to join it together to make the flower crown. And since it is December, then that means that spring is only a couple months away. So if you think that I'm not making a bunch of spring plushes again, I am. So definitely stay tuned for that. I want to make more flower crowns for my plushies. Let me know which one specifically you want to see them on. The next thing I crocheted is probably my second favorite crochet pattern that I designed of all time. So right behind the kitten and it's the raccoon. I started to get into the no-so, low-so genre now. In the spring, it definitely started to gain popularity. So for this one, the body, head, arms, and tail are all no-so, and then you'll have to sew on the legs and the muzzle and the ears. So it's about half and half. This one was probably one of the hardest for me to design just because it was one of my first patterns using the no-so method of crocheting pieces on instead of sewing them on. And I've, and I've really found that designing crochet patterns, figuring out how to make them no-so 
is one of the most difficult parts. I can just design something and make the pieces separate and then you just sew them on. That's a lot easier to explain than when to crochet them on, but I've honestly really enjoyed the challenge. So this was that for me. It was a big design challenge and I absolutely love how it turned out. So with that I made several different colors of raccoons this month. I sold most of them but I actually have this floral one. It's like lilac floral and I used bloom chenille yarn for this and really I just love anything made with this floral yarn. You'll definitely see more things made with floral yarn as I continue to go through what I crocheted this year because as you know I love florals and this yarn had just come out in the spring. And another new yarn that came out in the spring was this parfait pom-pom yarn. So it's this fun confetti yarn which is perfect for my dessert patterns. As you can see, I stole the strawberry on top of this one too. But you'll see even more things made with this yarn as well. So I definitely had to make a cupcake with this yarn when it came out. The last thing that I crocheted in May is actually a purse and it's this cloud purse. This pattern is in my shop and you can do the strap any color. I did a rainbow strap. I also did one with a blue strap as well. You can do it with the happy face or without the face, but it actually opens up in the back. And that's where the zipper is. And I did line this one with a cloud fabric as well. If you don't know how to line a crochet bag or add a zipper, this pattern comes with tutorials for both. So it's a good way to learn if you'd like, especially bags that are not a typical shape. I was really in the spring mood and had to make a cute little cloud bag. Oh, and then I also made a grumpy storm cloud. So I wanted this strap to look like lightning, so that's why I made it yellow. And then I added this grumpy face. <laughs> and he's not holding his shape right now because I didn't add a zipper or a lining. And if you know me, I probably never will <laughs> unless someone wants to buy this one. But these were the last things that I crocheted in May. Now we're moving into June and June was a very exciting month for me because I quit my full-time job about mid-June and went into crochet full-time. So I definitely started designing more and crocheting more. So you'll see just a little bit more as we move into the summer months. First thing that I crocheted in June was this floppy flower pillow. I knew that I wanted to make flower pillows for my space so I did these and this is based off of like a daisy and this is a free pattern on my blog and I just love how excited you all were for this flower pillow so you'll see as we go along I just keep making more flower pillows. <laughs> I use jumbo yarn of course for this. You can use smaller yarns for it. It will obviously be much smaller based on the yarn that you use but they still look really cute. So I made this pink one and then I made this like purple lilac one and these look really cute in the craft space. So I have one on my couch and one up on my yarn shelf in the corner behind the camera but this was a really fun one. They do take a bit to crochet just because they're so big and there's six petals. People say that they're a bit of a workout but I promise it's worth it. And especially if there's someone in your life that you really like and you want to make these for, it would make a really great gift. The next plush that I made was actually a pattern test for Yuval's crochet. And if you watch my channel, you've seen this little giraffe. I made it with that Bloom Chenille yarn that I just love. And this one was really fun because it's little so it works up quickly. And I just love the floral yarn and how it looks with the pink. She has a lot of cute patterns like this, like smaller plushies. I know that she has a really cute cow one too. So definitely check her out. This would also make a really great baby gift. Once again, no safety eyes for babies. <laughs> the next thing that I crocheted was another free pattern and it's this little carrot. And I wanted to make a bunch of different vegetables that you can make to sell at farmer's markets. So if you like to do markets and sell little plushies, I thought that these would be fun. Honestly, the carrot is the furthest that I got. I didn't make any more. <laughs> so if it's something that you're interested in, let me know and let me know if there's any other fruits or vegetables you want me to make. Oh, I did design a corn pattern in 2022 when the corn kid video went viral. So I have two vegetable patterns. It's not exactly a whole farmer's market, but we'll get there. And I didn't know that this looked like Mr. Carrot from the movie Bolt. I had never seen the movie before and then when I posted this everyone was like oh it's Mr. Carrot and I was like who's Mr. Carrot? So I watched the movie after I made this. It's such a cute movie by the way we really enjoyed it and the dog has this little toy called Mr. Carrot spitting image. I didn't even mean to but I actually love that connection. The next thing I made was actually another pattern test. I did a lot of pattern tests in July because I kind of wanted to ease myself out of my full-time job and into crochet full-time so doing pattern tests was kind of a fun way for me to do that. So the next one was for this no-so cheeseburger. 
Look how cute that is. So this pattern is by Curious Papaya and her pattern is actually for a jumbo burger. So she used jumbo size yarn for it and it's about this big. It's really cute, but I wanted to make it with Parfait Chunky and I just love the size of it. I feel like this would sell well at markets. I say these things never having done a market before, but just based on what I see other people sell. And then I had to make a second one too, because if you're a SpongeBob fan, you know what a pretty patty is. I made one of my own. <laughs> and then I did a felt face, like a felt Spongebob face on it. I thought it would be silly and cute. And honestly, I love crocheting just strange things. So this was definitely a fun one. Check out Curious Papaya burger pattern. Really cute. The next thing that I crocheted in June was my No So Turtle pattern. And this was a big one. This is one of my most popular patterns and I'm so excited that you all love it. Kind of figuring out how to make this completely no sew was quite the challenge and I wanted the turtle to be able to sit. I've seen a lot of laying turtles but really not that many sitting turtles and as you can see I like my animal plushes to sit so I really love how this turned out and this was another one that I have a sticker design for. So there's the sticker and then there's the actual thing. I named this one Jacob the turtle after my nephew because he's one and he's bald and smiley so I thought they looked alike <laughs> but I actually crocheted a ton of turtles. I think that I made the most turtles out of any of my other patterns just because of how quickly they worked up. So I'll show you some that I still have. I made a darker turtle that looks a little bit like Franklin and then I did this floral turtle with the pink shell because like I said Bloom Chenille had a chokehold over me this year. And I also made a blue turtle and a dessert turtle or dessertle. I've seen people also make Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from this which is really cute. I should probably write up a mod for that one as well. And then of course, going with the jumbo theme, I had to do a jumbo turtle. This is one of my favorite plushies. It surprisingly worked up pretty quickly. And if you watched my last video of me decorating the craft room, he sits on my couch now and I put a little Santa hat on him for the holidays. So I definitely made a lot of turtles in June. And then the last thing I crocheted in June, I told you it was a big month, was my No So Sunflower Pillow. This is my most popular free pattern. Very grateful. It's definitely a doozy with the 10 petals, but it's completely No So. It uses jumbo yarn. You can use Parfait XL or sweet snuggles and it measures about 20 inches across so it's definitely big but I have seen people make it with sweet snuggles light and that's a great size as well not as big of an undertaking but still a pretty throw pillow this was the last thing that I crocheted in June okay we're moving into July so we're more than halfway there the first thing that I crocheted in July was this fox this pattern is in my shop and it's similar to my raccoon so if you make the raccoon and the fox they'll be about the same size I tried to do as many no so elements as I could on this one. It's about half and half, just like the raccoon. So I made this classic orange one, and then I also made this Arctic fox. So this one is a bit bigger than this one because I actually use Sweet Snuggles Light. And although they are both super bulky yarns, Parfait Chunky is smaller than Sweet Snuggles Light. So if you're looking for an easy way to size up or size down projects, that's a good way. But I just posted about this Arctic fox recently since it is the winter time now and I appreciate everyone that's excited and is going to make it. The next thing that I crocheted in July, I actually did a pattern test for Crochet Grove for this really cute beagle. She has a really cute dog pattern that has I think four different dog types all within one pattern and I just had to do the beagle with those cute ears. It was a really fun pattern test. I definitely should make some of the other dog designs too because everyone really loves them. So definitely check out Crochet Grove's patterns. They're all really cute and well done. The next thing that I crocheted, and this is up there for one of my favorite pattern designs, but it's this No So Crab plush. I had a lot of fun designing this and I was actually in Maryland on a little vacation. And if you don't know, Maryland is known for their crabs, but I was in Maryland when I released this pattern. So it really brings back good memories for me but I wanted a crab that was like sitting standing because uh, I usually see them all laying down but you all wanted both so of course I made it happen. So the pattern includes a laying version and a standing version. Both are no so it's really just the placement of the eyes and the mouth that change. But the crabs are another one that I just kept making different colors and I'll show you because I kept them all. So I did the classic red one and then the blue crab too and then I did a peach one as well 
and Amy from Curious Papaya. She said that this one looks like I took his clothes and now I can't unsee it. And then of course I did a pink one because I wanted to do another laying one. And then the most popular one is this strawberry crab because who doesn't love a strawberry animal? So I did the seeds and the strawberry color on top and then the stem on top and then the different colored belly. The mod for this one is on my Instagram. So if you want to make a strawberry crab, definitely check it out. And then the last thing that I crocheted in July was actually for a friend of mine released a crochet book and it's called Animal Amigurumi Adventures 2. It's by Lauren Espy, a menagerie of stitches. And all the patterns in the book are designed with worsted weight yarn. So of course I had to make one in the parfait chunky and I knew that it would be big and cute and it just turned out so cute. It's a walrus and it's definitely a big plush but he's so cute. All the patterns in the book are adorable of course and he just looks like a big lovable potato. I don't think I'll ever sell this one because I love it so much but I'll put Lauren's book in the description of course. Now let's move on to August. The first thing that I made and I thought that I had it but I can't find it anywhere so I'll put a picture in. It's my forget-me-not pillow. Like I said I've really been on a flower pillow kick and I wanted to do one with petal shapes that were a little bit different so that's why I did the forget-me-not. I got a lot of really sweet comments after I released this from people who have a special connection to forget-me-nots and people who have experienced loss in their lives and said that this really meant a lot to them and that's honestly more than I could ever ask for is for people to be able to make things that mean something to them. So designing this pattern especially really brought me joy. The next pattern that I designed in August was in preparation for fall and this is my pumpkin spice latte pattern. I wanted to kind of make it look like the latte was spilling out from the cup and then we have lots of whipped cream on top, the best part, and then I did a little pumpkin cinnamon stick and the sprinkled cinnamon on top. And then from this pattern I realized that I could make pretty much any latte flavor. So next I did a peppermint latte with a little peppermint leaf and the peppermint stick in there and all these mods are included in the pumpkin spice latte pattern. So if you want to make one of these different ones, they're already included in the pattern. So then of course I had to do my favorite, which is the matcha latte. And I used mint parfait chunky on top for the whipped cream to make it look kind of matcha colored. And then I did the little tea leaves on the side and a white little straw. And then the last mod that I did for the latte pattern is this strawberry. It's almost like a strawberry milkshake. And I don't know what is happening to all of my strawberries, but there was a strawberry on the side of this latte. So this is the third strawberry that is missing. I don't know what's going on but the pattern does include instructions to make a little strawberry on the side. So I made a ton of lattes in August. I actually think August was the month that I crocheted the most. So the next thing that I made was this umbrella octopus. This pattern is in my shop and I just love the cute little fins on her head and this one is completely no so. So everything is crocheted on. And I made a bunch of different colors for this one too. So I have the classic pink and then I wanted to do a mint green one too. And then I wanted to use the parfait pom-pom yarn again. So I did a rainbow octopus with each different tentacle, a different color of the rainbow. And then the yarn is that rainbow confetti color. So this one was really fun to make. And then of course I had to do a jumbo one. So this is my jumbo umbrella octopus. I actually liked it without a mouth. I was making it on TikTok live and I had everyone vote on whether we do a mouth or not. And we voted no mouth and I'm glad that we did because it looks really cute without it. So far in August, lots of lattes, lots of octopi, but we're not done yet. I have a lot more. In August, I also designed my ice cream cone pattern. After I made my latte pattern, you all said you wanted an ice cream cone pattern because the whipped cream kind of looked like ice cream. So I created this pattern and it's one of my most popular patterns. So thank you all. I actually designed it on a whim. I'm so happy with how it was received. Again, I used the parfait pom-pom to make this look kind of like a birthday cake ice cream cone. And if you watched my crocheting for eight hours straight video, you know that I made seven more ice cream cones. So actually in total, I made 10 different ice cream cones in August. Most of them have sold already as I was definitely running out of space with that many ice cream cones, but I still have this lavender lemon one. And then I have my favorite one, the rainbow sherbet ice cream cone. And then of course I had to make a jumbo one. So I did a strawberry ice cream for the jumbo one. And if you notice, I have all my jumbo plushies. I don't sell any of them because they just cost way too much to ship. So the jumbo plushies are taking over quite so that was everything I made in August. Moving on to September, the first thing that I made 
was this flower frog and this is a free pattern on my blog. I took my easy frog pattern and my little flower plush pattern and I just meshed them into one. The petals and the feet are no so but the eyes are not. And I also have a tutorial for this one on my YouTube channel too. So I made one with the classic pink petals and then of course the lilac chenille bloom. And then I did a collab with Michaels in September which is always a lot of fun and I made this jumbo rubber duck. This is my Doris the duck pattern but of course with jumbo yarn. And then I didn't make the feet because I wanted it to look like a rubber duck. But I have this jumbo plushie on top of my other yarn shelf in the corner and it has the mushroom and the pink flower next to it. So they look really cute together. And then I made another s'mores plush and this is from my whip jar video. So I was finishing works in progress. I had this one sitting in a basket right down here for months and it was almost done but I just kept having other things come up that I wanted to make more so that video was a good excuse for me to finish this and I used the parfait pom-pom yarn again to give it kind of that funfetti look and it was really nice that I pulled this one because I could make it for fall time and I feel like s'mores are such a fall dessert like sitting around the bonfire on a chilly night making them so I was happy to make another one. My next make was another pillow pattern but it was a little bit different than the flowers that I have been making and it was this cute pumpkin pillow Below. This is a free pattern on my blog, free tutorial on my YouTube channel, and it's just a nice accent for fall time. Honestly, this was a hard one to figure out to give it kind of like the dimension that pumpkins have, but I like how this little one turned out. The next plush I made was in preparation for fall, so it was this black cat. And this is my kitten pattern, but I obviously used black yarn, and I think this is called Shell, uh, this accent color that I used and then I did an orange yarn ball. So it looks a little bit like a pumpkin. And I had you all vote on different names for this cat. I'm pretty sure Salem won. So like the cat from Sabrina. So really cute. And because I used black yarn and I wanted you to be able to see the eyes, I did a little bit of a white worsted weight accent just so you can see them. So if that's an issue that you're facing, if you're using black yarn and you want to be able to see the details, you can add a little bit of white on the outline so you can still see them. And the last thing that I crocheted in September were a bunch of squirrels. So this is my low sew squirrel pattern. I say low sew because everything is no sew except sewing the head to the body. So like the tail, feet, arms, ears, all no sew. But I really enjoyed designing this pattern and then of course giving him a little acorn to hold because who doesn't love their plushies to hold cute things? And I made two other colors so I'll grab those. I made a white squirrel holding a little sunflower. And my pattern does include the little things for them to hold. So like the acorn or the sunflower. And then I made a dark brown one and he's holding a little mushroom. So these were a lot of fun for me to design and make. And again, one of my favorite patterns this year. Oh, and I also have the raccoon as a design too. This one has a little crochet hat. That was everything for September. Moving on to October, the first thing that I crocheted is this pumpkin roll. I'm back on the sweets train. This is a free pattern on my blog and this is by far my favorite fall dessert. Pumpkin rolls are just so good. And my favorite part about this, of course, is the little icing swirl. This was a little bit difficult to figure out how to make it and make it kind of lay flat, but I had to put a little pumpkin on its head so that you know that it's a pumpkin roll and not a football. The next thing that I crocheted in October was actually something just for fun, which I don't do that often, but it's this squid pattern. And this is a pattern from All From Jade. I love all of her patterns. They're so well written, really cute. It's the No So Squid. It's tiny, it's cute, adorable. Uh, the eye are a little bit different than what I usually use. I got these eyes from AliExpress, I believe, but they have the glitter backs that you can change out, which is really cute. So I definitely should use those for more plushies, but I thought that the squid would be a perfect one to use those eyes for. So just a cute little fun pattern. Check out Jade. All of her patterns are great. The next things I crocheted were just for fun too. So I guess I was taking a little break from designing in October, but I made this little house plant and this one too. This one is a little fern and this one is kind of like a curly plant. I did a video where I crocheted these for the craft room, but making crochet plants is just one of my favorite things to do. They really add a touch of whimsy to the space and it's nice having plants that can never die as well. And next I crocheted another dragon. So I actually used Burnett Velvet yarn for this and I had never used velvet yarn before, but I really fell in love with it after I made this dragon. It looks and feels just so soft. I'm definitely a velvet yarn stand now and I want to keep making my patterns in velvet yarn too to see what they look like and it took a little bit of getting used to using the yarn because it is so soft. I felt like my hook slipped off 
more than it usually does but I feel like it's like any other yarn the more that you use it the more you get used to it so let me know if you like to use velvet yarn I've really been enjoying it my next crochet make was this little sheep and this is a pattern in my shop it's just a cute simple sitting sheep and I made little puffs on the head they're actually not bobble stitches they're chains and I made a couple different ones so let me show you I made this classic white sheep and then I made a black sheep as well I think my favorite part is their little tails <laughs> And then of course I was on my velvet yarn kick. I made a cute little brown and white one in velvet yarn and added little eyelashes to it. So again, the sheet pattern is in my shop if you want to make one. My next make is another flower pillow and it's the daffodil pillow. This one was fun to design with the little trumpet coming out of the center. I wasn't really sure how I was going to do it, so it was a fun little challenge. And it was neat making something different than just like a daisy or a sunflower. So as always, all my flower pillows are free patterns on my blog and I believe this one is a tutorial on my YouTube channel as well. But this one sits on my new pink couch and I really like how the white and yellow looks on the pink. That was everything for October, now let's move into November and November was a busy month as well. So the first thing that I crocheted is this little horse plush and this is my pattern in my shop. My favorite part about this is the hair. It was definitely fun to do and I found that kids really like the texture of it so I did some bangs in the front, hair down the back, and then the tail of course. So I designed it in this chocolate brown color but of course I made other colors as well and actually my pattern includes a mod for a unicorn and also wings if you want to make it a pegasus. I don't have the unicorn anymore, that one was snatched up, but I definitely want to make another one, maybe with rainbow hair down the back. I think that would be really pretty. But aside from this one and the unicorn, I also made a lighter brown one. There are actually horses near our house, so when we take walks from our house, we used to walk past the horses and these two horses look like two of the horses that live at that farm, so I wanted to make these two look like them. And then and this last one I made is a little gray horse with black hair. I do want to make a spotted horse and add that mod to the pattern. So let me know if that's something that you want. And then in November, I got into kind of a miniature kick. So several of you asked if I could make my ice cream pattern smaller so it could be almost like a realistic size for ice cream. And that sounded like a lot of fun to me. So of course I did it. So this is the mini ice cream cone pattern. It's completely separate from the regular size ice cream cone pattern because they are just completely different patterns. I only did two layers on the mini one and there's three on the big one. I'll grab it. So this is the size difference between the two. Both of these I'm using the same yarn, Parfait Chunky with a five millimeter hook. So you can see how different the patterns are. I love making these mini ice cream cones. I've made four or five of them so far and they work up really quickly. For me it's about 30 minutes or less so I love that. So then after I made the mini ice cream cone I had you all vote on if you wanted more mini patterns and which ones. And no surprises, the s'mores one. <laughs> so I had to make a mini s'mores pattern and a mini ice cream cone pattern. And don't worry, I'm making more mini ones soon. But I'll show you the size difference for the s'mores too. If only you could see the floor in front of me. It's covered in plushies right now. So there's the size difference for that one. Again, same yarn, same hook, completely different patterns. I've had several people message me and say that the mini ones sell really well at markets. So if you like markets and you want to try it out, it's not as much of a time commitment as the big s'mores is. And now we're really getting into things that I've crocheted recently. So you may have seen these already. But next I made this reindeer. And this was a pattern test for KS Crochet Critters. Really cute pattern. Of course I did pink and white. No surprises there. And I just love the pattern for these little lights on the antlers. I gave her some cute eyelashes too. But such a fun winter pattern, definitely check it out. And then continuing with the winter Christmassy theme, I crocheted this little elf plush and this is a free pattern on my blog. This uses the same base as my Grinch pattern. So if you make both, then they'll be about the same size. But this one works up pretty quickly and it was a lot of fun to make, especially the hat and the bangs. I made them look kind of like the bangs on the horses. And then the last things that I crocheted in November and going into December was my no sew penguin. This pattern is completely no sew and I really wanted to make it that way because I hadn't seen many no sew penguins before, at least ones that looked like this. There are a lot of color changes on it, so if you're color change adverse, maybe not the best pattern for you, but if not, this pattern actually works up pretty quickly and I included a bunch of accessories for it. I kind of went overboard on the accessories just because I was having so much fun making them, but the first one is this little trapper hat and scarf. I think this is my favorite accessory and this hat and scarf are no so too which was a lot of fun to design that and then I also made this little lilac penguin and I gave her a little bear hat and a fish purse because she's just an accessorizing queen and then eyelashes of course I think this one is my favorite one just because this lilac purple color is one of my favorite yarns and then the last penguin I made and the last accessory 
is this blue penguin and I gave him a little fish hat. So it has the tail and the fins and then the top fin. I was going to give it eyes, but it kind of looked weird with the eyes up here and then the penguin eyes. So if you make it and you can make it look good with eyes, please let me know. So these were all the penguins that I made in November going into December. Also in December, I crocheted this little Christmas turtle. And yes, this is the hat that I've been using on all the different plushies because it looks so cute on them. So this is just my normal no sew turtle pattern and the mod for the scarf and the hat are on my Instagram highlights. But I think everything looks cuter with a scarf and a hat. So I don't have much yet for December since it is still early December. I have one plush that I have been working on for most of December and it is for a brand collab so I can't share it yet but if you go on my Instagram tomorrow, so I'm posting this on Wednesday, so on Thursday you'll get to see the plush that I've been working on. It's a really fun character, it was such a challenge to make and I had so much fun doing it. So please go check that out. Comments especially on brand deals are really appreciated and I worked really hard on this plush. So the last thing that I'll show you for December is another Another mini pattern that I've been working on. It will be out by the time that this video comes out. I'm not quite done with it but I will finish it later today and it's my latte pattern and I made a mini latte. So for this one I'll add the little cinnamon stick and some cinnamon as well. I might make this one like a cookie latte and add like half a cookie coming out here. Let me know what you think but I'll show you the size difference. So this is the regular latte pattern and then this is the mini. So it's quite a big size difference. Also this could pass for like an ice cream sundae as well if you're more of an ice cream person. So that is everything that I crocheted in 2023. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for sticking through this long video. I honestly can't believe that this year is coming to an end and not to get mushy, but honestly you all have changed my life this year. Wonder Crochet has become more than I ever thought was possible and it's honestly because of all of you and your support. I wholeheartedly want to thank you so much for watching my videos, buying my patterns, using my free patterns, commenting nice things. I appreciate you so so much and I really hope that you stick around to see all of the really fun things that I have planned for 2024. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you real soon.